you a very strange question. Two. You ready? This is fun. Please tell me, there's a whole room full of people. Please tell me, right here in Vienna, all the uses of a screwdriver. Tell me all the uses of a screwdriver. Tell me, I'm just asking a simple, straightforward question of a bunch of smart people. Tell me all the damn uses of a screwdriver. Shorting your battery by putting it across the lead. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, of course, we'll get to screwing in a screw at the end, but we can make that number to screw in a screw. Can I open a can of paint? Uh, can I stab somebody? Can I, open a yeah, I can pry open a clam. Can I tie it to the end of a stick and spear a fish? Sure. It's kind of hard to pull it back up. You can use it in a top to make a coin. Yes! <laughs> oh my God, I've never thought of that. Thank you. That's superb. It's, used, it's a talking point. And it's also a talking stick, okay, if you're an American, a Native American. Can I rent the spear to the natives and take 5% of the fish catch? I can go into business, right? You can kill somebody with this. Yes, I can kill somebody with it. Or I can scratch my back, right? Will you accept the following? And once you do, you're doomed. The number of uses of a screwdriver is not infinite. It is indefinite. Will you buy it? The number of uses is indefinite. There's a lot, but we can't. You got it? It's indefinite. Will you all accept it? Yeah? If you can describe the uses in words. I think it's not, but I, I better, let's come back to it later. Right now, just accept indefinite, okay? <laughs> Does everybody else accept indefinite? Okay, so now, I'm going to tell you about four kinds of scales. The first kind of scale is a nominal scale. It's just the names of things, Bill, Joe, Fred, Giuseppe. The second kind of scale is X is greater than Y, and Y is greater than Z, so X is greater than Z, it's transitive. The third kind of scale is a thermometer. It's an interval scale. Two degrees is as far from one degree as one degree is from zero degrees, but zero doesn't mean anything. And the last kind of scale is a ratio scale, like a meter stick. Two meters is twice one meters. What is it for the uses of a screwdriver? Are they ordered? Is one more than another? No. It's just a nominal scale. They're just different uses. Yes? Those two premises that the number of uses is indefinite and that it's just a nominal scale mean that no algorithm, an algorithm is a rule following procedure, no algorithm, no Turing machine, including Word, no Turing machine, no algorithm at all can calculate all the uses of a screwdriver nor calculate the next use of a screwdriver. It's not algorithmic. This is a big conclusion, because can you find a new use for a screwdriver? Of course you can. Yes? We do it all the time. And if you don't believe it, we've all seen James Bond from many years ago. Could James Bond find, find a new use for a screwdriver when he needed to? Of course he could. Of course somebody wrote it, but of course he could. So this means something important. I think this means, and it's not going to be the main thing I want to talk about, the human mind can be algorithmic. I, I still know how to do long division. The human mind need not be algorithmic. Computers are algorithmic. Therefore, the human mind is not reducible to a computer. Big topic, but I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, now, um, now we were talking about a screwdriver in Vienna. Now take a screwdriver out in space. I've only begun to think about this in the last couple of months. Suppose there's a screwdriver floating in space. And for the heck of it, have a cutoff hand that's alive for about 17 seconds holding the screwdriver out in empty space. Can very much be done with that screwdriver? Uh-uh. Right? What are you going to do? You could twirl it and you could throw it. And the hand can't, can't, can't even stab itself. right? <coughs> There's something very deep going on that I'm very puzzled about, and it's going to get more and more puzzling, and it has to do with why there's hearts in the universe. You can't do very much with the screwdriver if the context of other things and processes around it is tiny or nothing. There's a lot 
any of us can do with a screwdriver here on the surface of the earth in this year of our Lord 2016. Yes? We're going to have to puzzle about this, and I can only partially say it. It's what's new to me. Okay. Um, now, what I want to come back, come back to the screwdriver here in, 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 in Vienna. Um, I want to talk about adjacent possibles. It's the new use of a screwdriver. Okay. Um, okay. Now I want to talk about the evolution of a bacterium. And I hope to begin to persuade you that there is no law whatsoever that entails the becoming of the biosphere. No law beyond Pythagoras. Here's all that has to happen in evolution. I've got some bacterium, say in a new environment. I know how to say this because I've said it lots of times. All that has to happen is that some molecular screwdriver in the bacterium find a use that increases the fitness of the bacterium. And if there's heritable variation for it, that new use will come to exist. Therefore, a new function will come to exist in the biosphere. A new function will come to exist in the biosphere, right? Selection is not happening at the level of the molecular screwdriver. It's happening at the level of the Kantian whole, the organism. The whole organism is selected, and it comes to exist. So a new function just came to exist in the universe. Yes? I'm going to give you a very simple example that I, I've thought about off and on. So imagine you have a protocell, and it's, it's, it's managing to reproduce, and it's got little proteins called peptides in it, and it's got a bounding membrane called, a, say, a liposome. It's a bilipid layer. And about a year ago, it dawned on me, suppose that some peptide kind of peeked through the membrane. Now I have to go back. Here's this, here's this protocell, and it's in a, it's in a nutrient-rich medium, and it's floating free in the flowing nutrient medium, okay? Suppose that what happens is that a peptide occasionally peeks through the membrane and comes out on the outside, partially on the outside of the membrane, and the little protocell attaches to a tiny stone. If it attaches to the tiny so stone, it's not flowing in the nutrient stream, correct? If it's not flowing, it's, it's exposed to more nutrient than if it were flowing. What just happened is, now if that's heritable, ver uh, heritable variation, what will evolve, one can hope, is a protocell that can attach to a rock and hang on to it and feed in the flowing nutrient stream. It's just become, in English, a sessile filter feeder. Filter feeding has come to exist in the universe. It just did. We just saw it. I'm going to come back to this because it's even more puzzling than that, but there it is the little protein found a use that enhanced the fitness of the protocell. That is the arrival of the fitter, something that Darwin never solved. This is the arrival of the fitter. But it's a new use. Could we have said it beforehand? Typically, it's a new use of the screwdriver, and we could not have said it beforehand. This is going to mean in due course that, because I'm going to get to Darwinian pre-adaptations, that that, that, that there's going to be no law that's going to entail the becoming of the biosphere. But